Hey there everyone, Dr. O here with just a quick little video to supplement some of the stuff that we talked about towards the end of chapter 22, part 2 of the lecture video series. So one of the things that we mentioned is that in neural control of breathing for the sake of maintaining homeostasis, really what we're doing is we're keeping our eye on three separate parameters simultaneously. So we're keeping our eye on the oxygen saturation, which is our PO2 value at homeostasis in arteries. The set point is about 100 millimeters mercury. We are keeping our eye on the PCO2 value, which is the carbon dioxide saturation value, again, at homeostasis in arteries. We expect this value to be approximately 40 millimeters mercury. And then the third one that we're keeping our eye on is the pH of the blood, which we've established several times before, has a set point of approximately 7.4. So we had mentioned that even though we're keeping our eye on all three of these parameters simultaneously, the body is actually most sensitive to changes in pCO2 and, and the pH of the blood rather than the PO2. We're not quite as sensitive to oxygen levels and the purpose of this video is to help explain why that is. So right here in this graph, we have our three different parameters that are at their homeostatic set point value. So PO2 is 100, pH is 7.4, PCO2 is 40. So these are what we expect these values to be when everything is fine, when we are normoventilating. So at this point right here in the graph, I'm gonna put a little arrowhead right there. At this point in the graph, let's say that we start hypoventilating. We are not breathing enough, we're not bringing in enough oxygen, and we're not getting enough carbon dioxide out. So let's see what happens to these three different parameters as hypoventilation occurs. So let's start with carbon dioxide here. So uh, the whole purpose, one of the two purposes of ventilation is to get carbon dioxide out of the body. So if we are not ventilating enough, we can expect our PCO2 values to start to climb. So what we're going to see here is over time, the PCO2 is going to start going up like that. Now, as a consequence, and we spent some time talking about the relationship between carbon dioxide levels, the role of carbonic anhydrase and how that changes the pH of the blood through the conversion of carbon dioxide and water into carbonic acid. The more carbon dioxide we get, the more acid we're going to make, and we can expect the pH of the blood to start to drop like this. Okay, finally, let's take a look at what happens to the oxygen. So you would typically expect this to behave pretty much oppositely to what we saw with carbon dioxide. So almost immediately after hypoventilation starts, carbon dioxide levels start going up. So you would expect the same thing for oxygen, right? Well, hold on just a second there. So the thing to remember with oxygen is that the PO2 value of 100 millimeters mercury here represents only a very small fraction of the total amount of oxygen that is in the blood. Keep in mind, most of the oxygen is being carried by hemoglobin. So if we are hypoventilating and we are not replenishing oxygen into the blood, yes, you would expect the PO2 value to fall if hemoglobin was not there. So it turns out that what is immediately going to be affected by the drop in oxygen is not the PO2, but rather the oxyhemoglobin percentage. So as hemoglobin starts to unload its oxygen, it replaces oxygen that is lost from the blood plasma. So what that means is that even as we hypo hypoventilate, the oxygen level is going to stay pretty constant over time until we really start to tap into those hemoglobin stores of oxygen and then eventually we can expect it to start to come down like this. So the whole purpose of going through this is to convince you that if the whole purpose of respiratory homeostasis is to make alterations in the breathing rate, whether to increase it or decrease it, for the sake of adjusting to and maintaining homeostasis as quickly as possible, oxygen is not the number one thing that we want to keep our eye on because 
Oxygen is the thing that is going to change last. So it is for this reason that our bodies, especially those chemoreceptors in the carotid, the aorta, and the medulla, they are most sensitive to these changes in carbon dioxide and pH because anytime there is a hypoventilating or hyperventilating status within the body, these are the things that are going to change first. And if you're in the business, as homeostatic mechanisms are, if you are in the business of fixing problems as soon as they become problems, these are the ones that you want to pay attention to. So I hope you found this video informative. So that is all we wanted to cover here. So I will sign off and I will see you guys next time.